My name's Jared Brown. I know Josh from right here. A way cool dude, really into tobacco. And he's just a straight up cool dude. Man, I did three tours in Iraq with the Marine Corps. And, uh, and I, I size him up and I like that dude. He's good stuff. So now I'm getting out and I'm dealing dope. Of course I can cook, whatever. It don't matter. But I'm running cocaine and marijuana from California up into Dayton in Cincinnati, Ohio. I get pinched up out there. But I got a badass lawyer from these dudes, that, the Dayton Outlaws. I moved around. I didn't get in trouble. Yeager. 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 Well, let's get to work at Wendy's and then um, I'm usually I'm on the lobby all the time, so I work the lobby and I, you know when it comes to like customers coming for a rush, I'm stacked up with trays and all kinds of crap, so I'm working my ass out to make sure that lobby looks good. So by the time I leave, the next person in the lobby doesn't do much of a job. It makes your job easier. But towards the end of my stay at Job Corps, it got pretty bad. So and it was just stress every day. You're just praying somebody's just in God that it was just cease and desist, but it wouldn't. I met Stephanie at Job Corps. And I managed to convince her to stay. I said, look, Stephanie, um, I fucked up at Job Corps. You have a chance to make something of yourself. You know, I'm taking the harder route here, trying to get famous on YouTube, so. <laughs> I figured, you know, if she gets a job working with a computer, she'll make enough money, and then we can live together. How much I'll make. Perfect. Yeah, go ahead, have a shot. That's all I need. Just sit. <laughs> yep. It's like 40% coating. Well, today at Wendy's, we, we had a, a pretty gnarly ass rush, and I was like, my mom just gave me 20 bucks for a beer. I sent my sister the one night, so 20 bucks. I'm like, oh, sweet. I know I'm doing it after work. I'm getting cigarettes and booze. <laughs> yeah, my dad watches some of my YouTube videos, and, you know, if I'm doing something that's not appropriate or the, or the concerns him, you know, he'll give me a lecture. Well, like the one video I had, or, um, I was fighting a demon. I had the gun pointed in my head, and you know, some years I called my coworkers cunts because I was kind of mad at what they were doing, you know. But I got over it, obviously. My dad was concerned that I hate women, that I'm gonna shoot up a place or some shit. I'm like, no, that's not the case. I mean, if I'm angry, I prefer to express myself through like YouTube or my music. It's much healthier than actually going out and all doing you it. Call that art? See me sleeping behind the building and waking up with no money. That's art. And then making money. Wake up in snow with nothing. Nowhere to go. Nobody to love you. And then have to make money. Move around. Which is the struggle of life. Yet dealt a hand. Shit, look out. I'm a boss, man. I walk down the street and fuck the baddest pussy you've ever seen in your life. There's no feelings. Pussy is pussy, man. I mean, before I was a virgin, before I lost my Virginia, I was like, what's the big deal about sex? And after having it, it's like, oh, that's it? I mean, it's great in the moment, but after that, it's just like, oh, it's just sex. I hit you one time, and it's done. 
I'll go to jail, dude. That's how sorry life has got for me. Where the fuck you at? I go to jail. Every day. Where the fuck you at? Punk ass bitch. Shit. Nut up. Or get fucked up. Nut up. Or get fucked up. That's what's up today. No, one of them would be um, Tombstone with Val Kilmore and Kurt Russell. It's really good. Uh, smoked Jailhouse Acid, and I ate it too. But that's like toothpaste and an orange. I like a lot of the movies. I Pink Floyd, The Wall is fucking amazing. Yeah, you put toothpaste in an orange. There's the chemicals in the orange juice and the chemicals in the toothpaste with um, fluoride and orange juice creates a mouthful of acid. Yeah. I got used to it. I mean, the high didn't last nearly as long when I got used to it. My friend Forrest ate some and fucker was gone. He was like, you know, seeing, sound, hearing colors and all kinds of crazy shit. He comes back to the dorm at Job Corps and he's like, what just happened? I'm like, you were gone for like a couple of hours, dude. What, what happened? He's like, I don't know, dude. And then he had to have a talk with the counselor because I think he said it might have scared somebody that was walking off in the woods when they weren't supposed to. I'm like, oh, geez. Off. I want to get my dream house built in a um, middle of a forest kind of area, like surrounded by pine trees and stuff. It would be pretty really cool. I'm trying to get this um, Second Empire Gothic mansion built, like a cool tower. And I don't know how much it's going to cost to build. So, you know, once that music takes off and I'm making money with a working company that, that trusts me, I trust him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, then I start looking at, okay, what kind of house do I want? Because I don't have to live in the smallest apartment anymore. I can have a bigger house. <laughs> I know Josh through Chris, even though Chris hates me, I chill with him and Chris all the time because they're pretty tight. Like we go see races and stuff and I start rap battling with that big guy Chris. Yeah, I did shit in a trash can and I didn't even wipe. You're gonna be real Yo, yo, check it, lick it like Matt Pickett. I have the power for some empty. I do my two doses of ecstasy after I show you my legacy. I pop my two pills, I do it with my several quills. I make sure everybody knows me. I smoke my weed and pack my green. I motherfucking sag my jeans because I know I'm a Mexican bean. <laughs> I'm not gay, so. I weigh 160. And um, I weigh 140, pure muscle. Nice. Um, kid. And, he's um, 10 and he's 13. I haven't quite made it yet, but I'm making a YouTube show about beatboxing. So if you guys want to hit me up, I'll just email the people who want to hit me up. Email me at yahoo.com. All right. My name's Talon Johnson. Uh, 
was on junior high when I discovered Cradle of Filth for myself. I didn't really um, fit in very well with other kids. You know, I found that with goth, I could be accepted for who I was, for my misunderstood self, and then not have like, people judge me because there are people with similar stories and whatnot. My friend Chris gave it to me. I'm like, you never know what's just gonna go down. Some crazy guy comes up, I wanna kick your ass. I'm like, okay, I got a knife, what now? Uh, I got a gun, okay. The thing about guns though is that if you learn how to shoot one, you run out of ammo, it's like, okay, you're fucked. While wow, you're reloading, they'd be like, oh, you take your gun, your ammo, and shoot you, and then you run off. You're like, what, officer? It was self defense. And if it doesn't work, I'd be like, it was the voices in my head, and start eating my poop in the courtroom. And of course, I was drinking some Jaeger last night. My guy goes, You're drunk. I'm like, I'm not drunk. I'm a little tipsy, but I'm not drunk. I mean, that's like bullshit. You're not drunk. I'm like, I'm not. He's like, Well, you're surely not sober. And then the whole time, my dad's drinking a beer. It's like. Plutonium turds. You rusty, he's a cobra sock puppet, yeah. I stick my hand up him and make him talk. Like, you like fisting cobras, don't you, Josh? Shut up, Rusty. <laughs> Bestiality, shut up, Rusty. <laughs> These Jaeger bottles, the lid doesn't stay on very well once it breaks, but, oh well. Oh. That tops that off. Hmm, sweet. Pot tobacco is a lot better when you're shit faced. <laughs> if you wear a belt, you wouldn't have to hold your pants up. <laughs> Ow! Cop bust them with the bruised face. Bet you wish you wore a belt now, huh? Ah, oh, shit. Smoking a pipe's quite nice in this colder weather, man. That bowl gets real hot. It's like, oh. <sighs> My first job was a paper ouch. Um, I think I was 12 or 13 years old. I had that job for a couple of years, and then I um, quit the job to join wrestling season. I wrestled, yeah, and never again. Oh, God, that's got to be the gayest, whatever. What you do is hold each other to the mat and singlets, man. It's like one step from porno, for fuck's sake. And then you get, then you got to wrestle these chicks in the singlets too, man. And he gets a boner and gets disqualified. What the fuck is that shit, man? <laughs> you sit there like you're in class and some chicks got a thong hanging. It's like oop, boing, and then next thing you know, you're like wrestling them. It's like oh shit, I think he prematurely creamed himself. He gets that. He's like a boner, he's like a wet spot. It's like you're just qualified for choosing your singlet. Oh come on, that's completely unfair. That's life. I don't recall ever winning any matches unless the person forfeited because I couldn't have my glasses on while I was in the wrestling. It's just some risk for my glasses. So, But um, I'd listen to Cradle of Filth and my little iPod shuffled, the one I had at the time before I would match and get pumped up for the match, you know. And, but I walk into the locker room and I'm getting changed and my pubes were so thick at the time. You're like, Saunders, there's a bear attack in your crotch. I'm like, oh, really? Wow. And at some point, I'm like, okay, so I tried shaving my pubes off with a razor, which kind of sucks because you got nick on your ball sack, and it like hurts like hell. So I started using like a little buzzer I got, and that makes it much easier and much more efficient. So I keep my shit trimmed down there. I remember this time I was a senior, my, a senior, my senior year in high school. Um, I just gotten over the, the, the this flu I had, and my friend pulls out this pipe, you know, for pot, and it's. It's the biggest pipe I've seen so far that I smoked out of. He's like, you want some weed? I'm like, fuck yeah, I want some weed. I was so fucking stoned off my ass. I walk in, and I'm still a little sick. I start shaking, and the teacher's like, um, do you want to go to the principal's office? You're shaking. I'm like, nah, that's okay. So I pronounce a pink foot, start tapping my foot, get into it, and then 
I go out to take a shit, right? And I think I have a fucking worm. But what's happening is the shit's going in and out of my asshole. It's not coming out all the way. And I'm sitting there storming off my mind going, Oh, fuck, I got a tapeworm. What the fuck is this? I finally squeeze the fucker out and the poop's about like that round. I'm like, are you serious? And I, like, I started laughing my ass off. Like, that blew my mind. I got back to class in this last hour of school and the high wore off and it was just chill. But <laughs> my friend Chris picked me up and I started drinking. Yeah, you know. And my friend Chris, we were dri he's driving in his van and we clip the back end of an antelope. <laughs> what the fuck did we hit? I don't know. Shit. And then we look and there's an antelope. I'm like, oh, damn. We hit an antelope. Dude. I get my friend Chris's Sam and I'm like, I want to put this thing in his fucking misery. My friend Chris is like, don't, we'll call somebody. We called it in. They said, well, it's nothing to worry about because they're doing it with your car. Like, okay. And we were across the street from the Wildlife Museum sign. This museum hosts, like, stuffed animals for, like, display and shit. And I had this sick idea. We should put that on the fence and tie it down next to the Wildlife Museum sign with this ass face on the highway because it'd be funny as hell. We never got a chance to do it because there's too much traffic, right? So we end up uh, <laughs> leaving it there. Go to a buddy's house. This guy passed by. You want it? Nah, okay. We come back, and my friends, they, they took it, and they butchered it in the driveway and washed out the blood off and stuff, and they, they took it in a bag. And my friend, he dumps the antelope in his ex-girlfriend's front yard, and then we drive off, like, just don't speak of anything to us, you know, like, oh, crap, so I probably shouldn't have said that, but, and so we wake up the next day, and he gets, he was some prime suspect, and they never, they never charged him with anything, because all this shit was clean, I'm like, oh, my God, drinking stories, and I can remember, too, I had to piss really bad, so I started peeing all over the dead antelope, after I'd farted on it several times, like, literally, stuck my ass in its face and farted, <laughs> and then, I peed all over it, and then I fucking peed on its eye. It made look it was crying. I'm like, oh, why are you crying? Why the long face, Mr. Antelope? I'm like, oh, that's sadistic. But I tried fucking stabbing it with the with the sort to put out its misery. It jumps up, kind of does this twitchy thing, and it just plop, plops over. I'm like, oh, this is so sad, but I can't help but laugh my ass off because I'm drunk. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was a couple months ago, actually. Um... I've gotten so drunk, I woke up like covered in vomit, pants are on my ankle, I have my underwear on, my shirt, no, what the fuck, like, what the fuck, oh damn, what did happen last night? I'm not much of a, of a people person. Look, it's a shag carpet. Shag carpet. You go take a piss, you're like, oh god, kidney stones, what the f are those maggots? Oh, what the, oh, what's that smell? Look over in the bed, oh, it's Anna Nicole Smith. Oh, shit, that was one crazy Halloween night. Fuck my life, I'm in jail now. Rock and roll! Stay in school, kids, don't do drugs. <laughs> 
No, like when I was growing up, man, I'd tell my parents, I'd never smoke cigarettes and do drugs. No, look at me now. Drugs, alcohol, and cigarettes. Yay! Yay! And what's ironic is fuck is I got my grandmother to quit smoking, my dad's mother, and she quit for me, and I'm like fucking like a chimney, so. Hypocrisy is so ironic. <laughs> oh, look at that, cigarettes. Yay! The funny thing is, I preach about it on my YouTube, like, oh, porn is, like, immoral and, like, wrong, and here I am, I fucking watch it. I'm a hypocrite from hell and back, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> I deny it, of course, because my dad watches my YouTube videos, you know, and my dad just probably gave me shit, like, oh, you watch porn, and it's like, you know what? Guilty as charged. Um, now, if the woman chooses it, that's her right, I guess, but she's forced into it, and that's just wrong. It's kind of a thing, too, like, where if it's, like, two lesbians in bed, it's kind of been glamorized by porn, so... They aren't taking that seriously or is offended by these homophobic sources, you know, the gay men. Hey, man, can we interview you? I'm on a documentary for YouTube. What? Oh, no, it's how just you know? another brick in the wall. So you remember Kyle and Katie? That's how you know me, right? That is exactly how I know you. It was yeah. Kyle and Katie. Who I haven't seen in a while. I haven't seen them in a while either, man. They're what they're in. They got two kids now, holy shit. I know, and they're in like Oklahoma or some or shit. Or Alabama or some shit. I have not seen your YouTube videos. thing is, I have friends who do bath salts, and they don't, they don't do that shit. I think it's a conspiracy that the government experiment got wholly wrong and they're trying to cover it up with the whole phony war on drugs. <laughs> What's next, necrophilia? I mean, seriously, what the fuck is... Yeah, you know what? If you're gonna fuck a dead person, at least try to get something out of it, okay? I mean, like something that's intact, like, you know, just like skull fucking someone, like literally the skull in your dick. <laughs> if I want to be a necrophiliac, I'll just grab myself some vagina from wherever because it's going to be just as good. Because you know what? Toys don't make noise. Neither do necrophilia. Well, <laughs> you know, I I actually know a person who, who, who claims he's a necrophiliac. Yeah. He, he came out of the casket. Uh, I, I've met him once or twice. He's actually my uh, girlfriend's friend. But I've met him once or twice. He's a really cool guy, kind of on the weird side. Well, dead serious. I just he farted. He actually, actually told her that if you ever find a dead body, I will pay you money for it. Oh, so it's a Russian order bride. <laughs> Tasteless. Usually, when me and Josh hung out, we were with Katie, and we really didn't really do a whole lot. Just kind of smoke pot and listen to Pink Floyd. That's about what we did. Yeah. We just sat around. Call of Duty. Zombies. <laughs> That's my boss. Okay. Rock and roll! <laughs> this black guy dies and he goes up to heaven and God gives him his wings. And he looks at God and he goes, God, does this make me an angel? And God goes, nah, nigga, you're a bat. I've had you know, a number of ghost encounters that definitely confirm my belief in them. I used to live in Tahoe and, um, we were going to church for Easter, and this is back when I still somewhat believed and all that. And um, I got down on the altars and I prayed. You see Jesus Christ walk in. And about two seconds later, he came in, just like the ghost encounters, just before I even had a ghost encounter, any encounters like that. He came in, white gown, red thing, sandals, long hair, goatee, like you see in those pictures. He came in, he walked down the aisle. So the station turned left, and everyone, didn't, no one, you know, saw him but me, because they're all like waiting for the service to start. They're kind of just sitting there, <laughs> and I sat there like, holy shit, I just saw Jesus Christ. And then I talked to my grandma, told her that, and she just kind of smiled, like, oh, it's little kids being little kids. But um, personally, I think it's the power of belief that caused me to see it, to see him walk, because the mind is a very powerful tool. Now, if you can convince yourself of one thing, you can make it happen. And that's sort of the foundation of my religion. If you can convince yourself and believe in it enough, it'll come true and it'll happen. And I've seen my religion take flight in certain activities, like chi balls. Well, um, <clears throat> I was at Job Corps one time, and I started talking about chi balls and what they're about. And, you know, like, that's bullshit. Don't show the most one. So I threw this guy a chi ball, and he literally he was in his bed, because we had bunk beds. One, two here, one, two here, going this way, that way, and then one, two over here. He got up here, I threw a chi ball, and he was like, whoa, boy! Really flew back into the wall. I was like, dude, that was some crazy shit. And we had these Asian kids that came, and they both actually hit their face, and they were like, what do you miss? Why is my that? And then this other guy felt the cheat ball, and his hand felt kind of numb, and his stomach felt weird, and he started feeling sleepy and getting a headache. So I'll be like staring at something and not realize it, just kind of just, you 
no bullshit in the breeze, wind, you know? And I know where boom moves. I've seen it happen like, I was in the quiet room in the job which is basically where the computers and the phones are, you know, for outside communication. And um, I remember sitting at the phone, went to call, and I don't know where the phone just goes Poof. And people are like, what the fuck? You know, I'm sitting there going, holy shit, I actually did that. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's a weird feeling that goes through me when stuff like that happens because I'm only focusing on it. It just kind of happens. And then it just happens in the second layer. It's like, holy shit. And I kind of zone off. And it's weird. But. Well, I had this symbol and this symbol. I drew them all. I just became obsessed with them. And then one day, I joined them. And it was like an opening to a new doorway, if you will, metaphorically speaking. And I'm like, that's my symbol. That's the symbol of the religion. And it spoke to me. And I've been obsessed with it. And I got a tattoo in my arm when I was 18. Okay, you got mind, body, spirit, and energy, belief, and then it intertwines with each other and back into itself. Basically, that's the element for the power and all that. I got a knife and I carved myself a pentagram in my stomach. It's kind of faded now. It's misunderstood like myself. This car's kicking my ass. <laughs> Holy shit, I got a mess with nicotine buzz. The way I dress, people don't take what I have to say seriously because they think I'm some kind of thug because that's how society is. They're judgmental. That guy, don't you know? It's the way I dress. People perceive me as some kind of thug or some w freak or weirdo. I'm a freak and I'm a weirdo, but I'm not necessarily a thug. If anything, I'm trying to stay out of trouble with the law so, so I can have a life. But it's a generalization. People see the way you dress, and th that's how they perceive you as a person. It's just like how society is. Like if you're in a bar and you know you see a risque dressed woman. Most guys see her as a one-night stand. Now she could be just going out to have fun, dressing real sexy, real risque, just to you know, get attention or whatever. But you know, the first impression of someone usually people judge by how they dress. It's unfortunate, but at the same time, it saves lives because people, you know, are like that. You know, it's like. Do I trust this person, you know, so for all you know, I could be working at a nursing home or some shit, no, I'm working at Wendy's, you know. You see some guy in a fancy ass suit, drives a real nice car, you think, oh, this guy's a well to member of society, he makes lots of money, obviously. He could be a fucking sociological psychopath, serial killer, and you wouldn't even know it because you're too busy focused on his outside, not his inside. A natural thing, you know, people some, will often fear what they don't understand. Sometimes you do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, but also because, you know, karma will pay you back for it, you don't know when, and you don't, thing is, I don't expect it to pay me back right away. I just know that I gotta go with karma when I'm doing good, you know what I'm saying? So, and I don't do it because of the karma. I do it because it's the right thing to do, you know? It shows people that there are people in America that still care. It's not just some ratty shithole consumed by corporate greed and money and power. Political power, basically. I can sit here and preach, don't be so judgmental, but it won't do any good because people are people, you know? You just live your day, life day to day and hope for something good to come out of it. If nothing happens, oh well, tomorrow's a new day. No 
Yup, no aborted fetus is in here. Prom night dumpster baby. Euphoric. Ooh. Fast food followed by cigarettes. Yep, it's unhealthy, it's the American way. Yay. What time is it? Adventure time! What? Oh, regular show is funny. I like regular show. I popped a string! Uh, what's going on? It's called the grocery store, you douche beaks. What'd you say, bitch? Huh? Dude, dude. I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought, motherfucker. Uh, got the King Cobra. Get some, bitch. Uh. You know, people who have Asperger's now and they're born with it, it's more easily diagnosed than it was when I was born. Because back then they had no idea what it was. I'm going from doctor to doctor. Josh is schizo. Josh is this. Josh is that. I'm your friend. Hi, I'm Chucky. You wanna play? With yourself? Oh! Oh no, he didn't. Oh yes, I did. I went there, Chucky. I went there. What now? What now, Chucky? What now? <laughs> uh... And 12 years later, my grandmother, my dad's mom, sends my dad an article and says, You heard of Asperger's? He goes, No, what is it? My grandmother sends him the article. It's, oh my god, that's Josh Stewart T. Holy shit. And then it had a thing that said, Things not to do when raising children with Asperger's. And my dad did those things. Ran the mood swings. <laughs> At one minute, I'm like, I'm calm, but a minute ago, I was like, Nyum. You know, but. Some people can be really irritating on Halloween. Throwing eggs at your house and shit. What the fuck is that? It's you know what I do? Take a BB gun, pop in the ass. Like, oh, you got eggs? I got a BB gun. What now? <laughs> nice. Very nice. Uh, they, got nice they have a huge selection of masks. Oh, Naughty Hogwarts student. Oh. Holy shit, busted. It would not mind being busted by her. Yes, ma'am, I'll have a ticket. <laughs> uh, you're under arrest. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, how come you'll have cops like this in Casper, man? I would not mind getting a ticket by one of them. I'd be like, oh my god, what the fuck is this? A cease and desist. I was detained, man. Should sure we go into like the Halloween dances at your school? It's like, holy shit. There's enough cleavage in here to have a parade. Oh my god. Nice to meet you. My name is Gothic King Cobra. <laughs> oh man. I got my eye on you. <laughs> Oh, that's no, that's cool. The chop shop, <laughs> not for cars either. <laughs> yeah. 
I'd like to thank the Academy for accepting me. Whoa. Those petrified eyeballs. It's weird. It's like Neversoft logo. You know, Wranglers are like, you know, they're like, they're like cowboy jeans, but fuck, I don't care. They're black and they're comfortable. I'm not really a cowboy, but... Oh, no, we're good to go. Do whatever I want out of it. See this? I think we just got him. Okay. He was right up here in this motherfucking parking lot. When the big black trucks picked me up, and the dude just happened to roll on scene. I mean, it was like, dude. They's like, man, we, it, we figured to have you five thousand dollars from off. It's him. I mean, everything. Yeah. It was when DCI comes up in this scene. Yeah. Shit. And then my boys, man. I, I know uh, that a whole bunch of them motherfuckers. But anyways. Man, that chain is hardcore. That's rocking. They got on a hot topic. No shit, that's badass. I like it. <laughs> yeah, this is choker chain right here. You got the camera, he's got the vodka and the weed. What the fuck are you guys doing? What makes you so special? I'm the foreman of the mall's landscaping. Since you know what I'm going in your life. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a devil worshiper, I guess. Cool. Oh, yeah. And you walking around with a pound of fucking tobacco. How much weed you got on you? Smoke a bowl. I don't got any weed on me. You need some weed, dude? Would mind some, yeah. You got money? I don't. I ain't hard to find, man. I'm homeless, so I stay in the mission, so. Yeah. Let's <laughs> buy some fucking Royal Inn Motel, dude. Yeah, I just fucking moved in two days ago because my old lady threw me out. God Came out me. here because my old lady moved out here with my little girl and shit. And I was rocking with her for a while and the bitch is crazy. So I fucking broke up with her and she threw me out right after I paid the rent. Hey, mm. the rent. See ya. Get yeah, it was kind of like that, man. That and I had no shit. money, so I fucking I went to the shelter and shit. Yeah. Like seriously, um, I don't know who this Josh is, but purely quite feel that I'm Josh, but I'm not gay, I'm straight. Well, some people wish I was gay because, you know, they fans got love me and shit, which is kind of creepy, but hey, you know, it's, uh, this thing looks pretty beast. I figured I'll break it in with some, um, Seven Seas Royal Blend Pipe Tobacco. This is good pipe tobacco, man, this shit's really strong, too, it smells nice. And I've, I've had this tin for about a month now, and still got a little bit left in it, plenty left in it, actually. The bowl here is not too big, so a little bit won't take much to fill her up. Chilling for tobacco. <laughs> so. And because I was watching a marijuana documentary on the Netflix, and um, it said people with Asperger's qualify for medical marijuana. I'd like to say what now? My condition allows me to smoke pot in states where it's friendly. I love Asperger's. I love having Asperger's. I never smoked out of a Meerschaum pipe before, but I've always liked the way they look, especially ones with the Cobra heads on them. So this is the uh, nice little quick hitter, I guess. Um, this is probably the tiniest pipe I've smoked out of as far as tobacco goes. <laughs> Aside from the ash burning my thumb, it actually gets pretty nice.
fucking white knuckle here. It's like, ah. <laughs> I'm just waiting to snowboard, man. I got hooked up with fucking smoking Jay, which is uh, Jay Quentin. He used to ride for LibTech. And, um,. Just gonna do some traveling, man. Hopefully, can compete in nationals this year, you know? Kicks the edge out, doesn't it? Yeah, I've been drinking for four days since I had to go to probation. I'm gonna get off in 19 days, so I'm stoked. I work at Sheet Metal Specialties. And, I don't know, I'm just fucking broke up with a girlfriend, so I'm getting trashed, and I'm gonna go to probably old Chicago's and drink some beer later. Maybe go to the bar. Fucking have a good time. That's usually what um, gets people to break up with each other because they're cool when they have their space, but then you, you put them together and you start getting more personal with the, with the relationship and then you find out just how annoying that person can be. She's just a super bitch, dude. So hopefully they fucking send her to jail and she loses her job. Ah! So are you still working at Wendy's? Yeah. I don't know, man. And you get caught, it's a 500 dollars fine on the spot. No ifs, ands, or buts. And so people are like, okay, let's keep Tahoe clean. Don't want to be wasting that money. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yep. I'm tired of walking. I'm looking to stop traffic. Give it right. Oh, God. Yeah, we can just kick back and fucking chill. Can I sniff fucking coke off the fucking table? Yeah, some guy was driving by while I went to you guys. He was fucking faggot at me and drives off. Told you that? Yeah, some guy just drove by told me yeah, that. People. Fuck around and get hit. What? What are you? So I took him off and pulled up my knife. I'm like, what? Like, Don't be whipping your knife out on nobody, dude. The cops are nice. Hey, it's cool. Let's just roll now. I've been on probation for 18 months. Dude. I'm done in 19 days. I'm hoping them fucking lights don't draw attention, dude. Cause I got a pine on me. This thing is a piece of shit. Oh. Oh. We're at Safeway. This ain't very safe. This is the unsafe way. Fuck it. Yeah, right choice and right job. Get some. Uh. Uh. How's it going, Stephanie? Good. Uh, it was pretty good today. Yeah. It was fun. I had a nasty back bike crash again. Yeah. Scraped uh, my knee, but I'm all right. Yeah. Hey, Stephanie, you're in the documentary right now. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> no. How's Jack? This morning, <laughs> I left my phone in the cafeteria. Uh oh. Yeah, luckily one of KP turned it into camera. That's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You didn't lose your uh, talking device. Yeah, it was just the cable cord that was fucking up. Devarus. Uh. Oh, so we're just got an iPhone 4 because their dad got the iPhone 5.
the day in Casper. My friend Emma, who has Asperger's too, she was like, hey, my friend Stephanie really likes you. She wants to get to know you. And I'm like, okay, this hasn't happened in a long time. I don't know how she can just openly admit that she likes me because I'm <laughs> weird like that. But, um, <coughs> and so I'm like, all right, I'll talk to her. You know, we, we end up talking and I'll check her out to the sack at the job court, which is basically the pool hall, the place in pool. And we started communicating and getting to know each other and shit like that. So she asked to go out, you know, she, she talked to me and stuff. And then it's like, okay, you know, I'll give it a shot. See what, see where it goes, you know. And I asked her out and play some pool. And we've been girlfriend and boyfriend ever since. But we've had sex on Job Corps campus multiple times and gotten away with it. And Joe Stewart's crazy because they see us coming out of a bathroom or out of some place secretive and shit. And... <laughs> And people were like pretty impressed by that because you know that's a terrible offense, but they fucking turned me from job for pot use, man. It didn't have to be like vaginal or it was sometimes hand jobs, you know, and pretty fucking awesome. But well, Stephanie wanted to have sex too, but I didn't want to, like, you know, pressure her to do anything she didn't want to do. And, and I said, Look, Stephanie, you know, I'm not gonna pressure you to do anything you don't want to do, you know. And um, uh, the first time uh, we were in arts and crafts, you know, doing some stuff. I start rubbing her thigh and going a little more risque with it, you know, through, through her pants, you know, and she's just like, <gasps> and then I start, I start nibbling on her earlobe, you know, affectionately and shit, and that drove her fucking wild. And I had no experience with sex or anything like that, but I had my theories and they work. <laughs> we ended up going to the forest by Job Corps and she gave me a hand job and I was like, holy shit. And then I went down and started licking that pussy good, like, ah, you know? And all on her tits and shit, and it's was, it was fucking nice, dude. Yeah. Well, we've been wanting to do that kind of thing, you know, for a while now, and we just had trouble, you know, because we were both frustrated because there's too many fucking staff on Job Corps, blah, 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 whatever. So we managed to stick into the girls' bathroom at the sack and do it there. The pool hall at Job Corps. Yeah. And holy crap, um, we started. I actually got it in, and holy shit, I lasted like two minutes and forty-six seconds. Oh, I had it on my iPod, man. Oh, yeah, I lost it, but yeah, I filmed it, you know, to prove to myself that I can accomplish some things with my life, you know. And people are like, "Oh, it's your first time. You're not gonna last very long." I'm like, "Bullshit." I lost a lot longer than I thought it was gonna last, but it felt fucking amazing. Like, uh, you ever heard of a tit job, right? It's basically where a chick. Matt jacks your dick off with his hits. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh yeah, I've had that happen a couple times. Fucking amazing, dude. Come on with those D's of hers. Oh yeah. The first time she sucked my dick, I should you know she swallowed it. I was like, damn. And I'm like, you know, because apparently whatever you eat or ingest, that's what your cum tastes like. She said it tasted like cigarettes and whatever else. We haven't gotten that far yet, but um. Wouldn't mind taking a trip down to Spencer's and getting some bondage shit and experimenting with that, yeah. Ball gags, whips, hot candles, red candles, leather suits, spikes. I already got spikes, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> a tip for me to you, if you're going to have sex with someone, man, you, if she says, do me like this, do it like that. Don't be like, uh, you know, pay attention and learn that shit. Because if you get her off more than one occasion, dude, it's not going to be like, you want to have sex? I don't feel like it. You know, she doesn't feel like faking an orgasm to make you feel studly. No. She's going to be like, oh, yes, if it was like last time, fuck yes. A little less in woman anatomy, the vagina. It's not as complicated as people are making it out to be. You got the clitoris, which is that bean shaping shape thing on the outside. And then you got her G-spot, which is legendary in its mystery, but really, it's not that hard to find if you or inside her and you feel what well, feels like a warm walnut shell that's her g-spot and if you get both those two at the same time oh my god uh this one time we were having sex and we were hyped up on rockstar like energy drinks like Ooh. legitly and uh i went down on her several times i could not come for the life of me it was 
pissing me off, but I think it's because of the rock star caffeine. I, I, could not, I was like, oh my god. So I went down there, and I think, she, you know, we spent like an hour and a half, two hours at it, and <laughs> I could not fucking come. And she tried her hardest to get me to come, too. I'm like, I cannot do it. I'm sorry. She's like, that's okay. I'm like, are you good on your orgasms and whatnot? She goes, yeah. I'm like, well, that's all I care about, you know. <laughs> well, I know when she's having an orgasm because, you know, she twitches like a uh, Parkinson's patient. She kind of shakes a little bit. And <sighs> You know, her leg kind of twitches a little bit, you know, and then several of those, it's like, oh, I'm like, you okay, you're twitching. She goes, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, oh, I'm giving her an orgasm. Beginner's luck? More like beginner's fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how I know I'm doing I just guessed, and my guesswork pays off, and I'm like her first boyfriend, I'm her first girlfriend, so it's the first time for both of us. <laughs> I'll give her a heads up so it doesn't like shock her, you know? Like, I want you to come, you want to come inside you or outside of you? Like, if you're the option, you know? And, Okay, so before I met Stephanie, um, a while back at JobQuest, I started serving grapefruit. So I'm like, oh, grapefruit, never had that before. And I actually liked it, you know, like eating grapefruit with sugar and all that. And normally, you know, after so many years of rejection, it's like, okay, I gotta quit caring about love and sex and all that because it's never gonna happen. Well, it actually did happen, but it's before I met Stephanie. Um, on the one time chance that I did actually care, um, I had a grapefruit for a, before I went to bed. And, and the thought occurred to me, can I mix this into a vagina? Hmm. So I ate all the grapefruit out, I poked a hole in the middle of it, and then stuck it on my dick, wrapped it around, and jerked off with it. Wet, cold, and slimy. About like fucking a dead chick. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I wouldn't know. But um, my roommate's are like, what are you doing? And I'm like, look, I had sex with the grapefruit. He's like, what? Fucking Saunders, man. I'm like, okay, look, I won't do it again. It's just too well. It's all, it's all good, dude. I'm like, okay, cool. So I threw it away. And then somehow the whole campus found out, found out about it. Because I saw Job Corps. It's kind of like high school in that aspect. So... And at first, I'm like, this kind of pisses me off. You know, people give me shit about it. So instead, I decided to make jokes about it. Like, mmm, good day for this. Sounds so good and juicy. You know, just random shit like that. And people are like, oh, this guy, you know, it's funny as hell, you know. I started doing my dances and shit and randomly in the sack when they're playing shitty music I don't like, you know. And it's shit like that that, you know, people are like, hey, Saunders is fucking crazy. He's funny as hell. Oh, yeah, nothing's going to get to him now, so... Fucking great fruit. <laughs> the crazy life of Gothic King Cobra. <laughs> uh, and it's like, after I had sex a couple times, it's like, well, that's the big deal about sex. That's, you know, it's a great thing to have in the moment, but really, it's not the world's biggest issue in life right now, you know what I'm saying? So, in a way, it mellowed me out a little bit. Um, and the crazy thing, too, is I'll be working at Wendy's, man, have my coworkers hit on me, too, or not like hit on me, legit, like, you know, subtext hit on me, if you, that makes any sense. It's like, what the fuck happened? All I do is get a girlfriend, and all of a sudden, every chick wants to fuck me. Like, no, no, I'm not saying literally, it just, you know, seems like that sometimes. It's like, okay, um, wow. <laughs> And that's, that's going to be funny too, is when I make it big and I'm on stage playing concerts and stuff and I'm on MTV and all these chicks that reject me are going to go, holy crap, I knew that guy. He used to stalk me. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's been times, you know, uh, at one point, you know, because of my disorder, it really uh, complicated my social life. Um, well, you know, my dad, you know, he means well, but he's kind of a kidder. He likes to joke around a lot, but I'm Asperger's. I took it literally, so... I never trusted my dad with advice on women. I, I had to figure that out on my own. I chose to anyway, and yeah, I'm 21 now. I'm starting to get a picture of it, but yeah, my dad be like, oh, Josh, you like so-and-so smoochy face, you know, shit like that, and that's how dads are, you know, but that really pissed me off. You know, I didn't care for that, because especially when those girls were rejecting me on top of that, I was kind of like taking a shit on my face, metaphorically speaking. Um, so I, um, when my dad was around, I went like shit just to show I don't like women when I really do. And then as soon as my dad left, I'm like, hey, ladies, what's up, you know? And they're like, nah, fuck you, little creep. I'm like, oh boy, I just screwed myself. <laughs> and it's been balled up on me for a number of years. And I finally let my dad know that, uh, what happened and how I felt about it. And my dad was like, well, I had no idea, you know? And I think for a while, it's because of those situations. I've hated women and um, my dad as well, but... You know, I'm trying to get over it, you know, I don't hate women by any means now, you know, it's just, a, I just had to come to terms with my own disorder and uh, realize that what's done is done, you know. <laughs> I just think, you know, if, like I'm visiting a town or some shit and I happen to run into one of these ex-high school crutches of mine and be like, oh, this is awkward. Hi, Josh, how are you? Oh, hi, so-and-so, uh, yikes, <laughs> you know. 
Uh, love does crazy things to you, man. Especially in my experience. It's like some kind of fucking drug that just fucks with your head, you know? Well, last girl I had a crush on before I met Stephanie, um, Miss Blue Diamonds in the Mist. Um, that was some crazy shit, man. I'll tell you what, that was, wow. Uh, she liked to ride Harleys, you know, and she was kind of that badass biker babe, you know, type, you know, and very attractive. Just, just intense, like, silver blue eyes. Just grab at your soul, man. And then after she left Job Corps, I was a complete mess. <laughs> yeah, she graduated the program in three months flat. Fastest completer ever. Yeah. Oh, crap, she's gone. What am I going to do now? You know, and then I just get serious look at myself and go, well, this is kind of a repeating thing for you, Josh. you got to realize that this shit's never going to happen. So I gave up. And then Job Corps being the way it is, it was very stressful and all that. And I, I attempted suicide with a guitar string. I had one slip knot around my neck. One of my roommates came in and stopped me. And then uh, like a month later, I met Stephanie. <laughs> So, that's funny how life goes sometimes, you know, ups and downs. It wasn't my first time attempting suicide, and certainly it wasn't my last either. I've tried stabbing myself, I've tried cutting my wrists, I've tried strangling myself, I've tried choking myself out. You know, if I really wanted to do it, I probably had a more effective method like swallowing poison or taking a gun to my head, but I don't have a gun, so. <laughs> and you know, at this point it's like, okay, you know, if I'm feeling depressed, there's, there's a way around it, you know. I'm not going to trust the drug companies, obviously, but, you know, it's one of the reasons why I, dr I drink so much, you know, it helps level up my depression a little bit. Ghosts of my past haunt me. I say fuck them and keep walking down this road of empty railroad track. Cause my mind, ever more open, expand like an empty railroad track. Just keep walking. Nothing to do but talking. Just keep walking. Living life one day at a time. My muscles get bigger than they say that size. You know, shrink. And my muscles fall faster than the average man. Yeah, that's a little trait I heard from my gymnast of a father. I know this, you know, area, you know, Evansville's got like that rib restaurant over there, the bar, and just trailers all over the place, so it's just a nice little subdivision of Casper, you know, it's something too fancy, but it's a place to live, so. Walking through the woods of Casper, mountain range, deranged, pained, ten gauge, my lyrics on a rampage to blow your head like I blow the mind. I kiss my past, kiss my ass, and throw it behind like a fart, don't even start. You want to start the shit, and I'll take a fart and piss. Sit there and diss on me. Fuck on me, I say, fuck on you, fucking guy. Oh, yeah.
I'm Josh Saunders. I have autism. I'm making the best of life. Legalize weed.